Welcome back. It is the end of an era for the Green Bay Phoenix women's basketball team, an incredibly successful era. Wizardry is seeing someone on a level, treating them that way, and watching them, ri watching them rise to that level, because they eventually will. So to answer your question, I would hope that the players felt that I gave them um, confidence, that I saw them on a level, and I gave them confidence to rise to it. Well, they sure did. After 21 seasons with the Phoenix, 37 overall and more than 800 yeah, yeah. wins, ranking 16th among Division I women's basketball coaches, Kevin Borseth announcing his retirement today. It was vintage Borseth. He was funny. He was emotional. He was honest. We visited shortly after his press conference. Well, I know this wasn't uh, a rapid decision for you, but I thought it was a very selfless explanation. Your players also agreed with that, that it means a lot to them that this wasn't about you. It's more about them and their future. It, it, that seems kind of on par for you. Well, I, you know, it, both of them kind of came together at the same time, you know what I mean? It just really came to a head, and that was uh, probably the biggest thing is in my decision. But, um, you know, I, the program has been successful for a long time. And the biggest thing is, from our players' perspective, is don't let it fall on your watch, you know? And, uh, of course, my ability to be as long, have the success we've had for this long, and to make sure it continues is really important. I know you got asked a lot of questions today about this long watch and the long, long list of accomplishments and looking around at the banners here. I'm curious, when you look at the banners and you see a year, can you remember something specific about that particular season or maybe a particular player that year that makes it special? There's moments probably that I can remember yeah. more than the exact years. I always goof the years up, but there's a lot of moments. Yeah. Like when Mandy Stowe hit the bucket that beat Wisconsin for the first time, for example, or, you know, there's a lot of memories that go back. Um, far too many to just, kind of go over one at a time, we'd be here all night. But yeah, there's a lot of them there. You don't have time to do that, though. You could go back, well, you just come in here and look at the years. Again, <laughs> I, I said there'd be time enough for count when the dealing's done, and right. the dealing is done, which is really good. Uh, your players also talked about how you're going to be around and what that means to them, and that you're going to be a part of, hopefully, picking their successor. That seems to be the plan. Uh, but I'm curious, if you are around and you're in these stands watching these games, what is going to be the difference between fan Kevin Borseth and coach Kevin Borseth? You don't get technicals as a fan, yeah, but you might get to score it out. Natalie McNeil said you have to keep your mouth shut. <laughs> <laughs> they still remember you, she said. <laughs> That's pretty funny. But no, I, you know, I just, I, um, this year really was quite a bit. I probably calmed a lot more than anything to realize that, you know, when you see players on the court, especially these players, and I said this before, Green Bay teams don't hope they win, they know they're going to win. Right. And these kids are, that's one of these groups right here. So when they're on the court, I have a ton of confidence in things that they do. And there's only little things that you can do to tweak. And a lot of it comes down to good or bad luck. You know, I always say in hockey, God's a hockey fan, because you can tell <laughs> off the pipe, not off the pipe. I think right. he's a basketball fan sometimes too, whether it goes in or not. But um, yeah, I, I, I'll be a good fan, obviously, just uh, hoping the kids do well. You've always talked about community, how important it is to your program and how important it is for your program to be part of the community. You are entrenched in this community. I mean, this is uh, 25 years at least, and it's going to be longer. Your, your name's going to be on a street. Uh, but you'll be here forever. Well, God willing, I'll be here as long as he, long as he takes me. Let's put it that way. But uh, yeah, it's a great community. Green Bay is, um, again, has adopted our community over the course of time and a great place to live. It's scary. I mean, I, I go to a lot of places and people know who I am and it's, you know, it's like, you gotta be careful you're not in a road rage type <laughs> thing, you know what I mean? But yeah. <laughs> or a coach rage thing, which we've seen a few times. Oh yeah. <laughs> uh, so how do you hope to be a part of this going forward? You know, I, don't, I don't really don't know. I mean, just the transition part is the biggest part. Just transitioning someone in here right now that, um, you know, gets can get a pulse because sometimes coaches have to form their own pulse at the end of the day. But it's good if you have someone just kind of give me a lead, give me some guidance a little bit. But at the end of the day, um, just to be involved in that, um, trying to get the right person in here is probably key. I think Josh and Mike are going to tell you the same thing. So just uh, having someone come in here that's got got some hopefully longevity. I think longevity is a big thing. Continuity is a big piece for coaching and for 
playing. And of course now with all the transfer portals right. rolling around, that doesn't seem to be a, um, a, lot, a lot of loyalty there anymore. But from a coaching perspective, longevity and continuity means a lot. So getting someone that wants to you know, sink their roots into Green Bay, in my opinion, is important because that seems to go the furthest. I liked what you said about how you hoped your players remembered you, is that you could see someone at a certain level, it was a quote you used, and that you hope you lifted them to that level. Did you see this program at the level it is now when you first came here, and how responsible are you to lifting, for lifting it to that level? I don't know. I just, you know, I've always had confidence in my ability as, as a coach. I've had confidence in that. Um, did I see us getting to where we're at now? I don't know that I really um, looked too far out in the future. It was everything it was you're too busy day to day, just clawing your way forward, trying to, you know, stay ahead, you know. And uh, it became an expectation after a while, you mm -hmm. know, from my mindset, from the player's mindset, which is really a good thing, you know. I mean, the targets on the back are good because that way there's expectation levels. So initially, I didn't really think about it. It was just a matter of just trying to get my feet moving, being away from home. Um, you know, trying to figure everything out from every every logistical angle, and then obviously uh, get things rolling. And we made it through the first year. I know that we started three and eight. Yep. We had a big we had a locker room talk. We were all in there, and everybody was just distraught that we didn't start the year that we wanted to. And then, of course, we won on like a 17-game win streak, and uh, won the league, went to the national tournament. Sherry had a great national tournament out against UCLA. I think we lost by four. And one of the players saying, "Geez, if we knew we could have beat this team, we'd have." You know, ahead of time, we'd have probably played a little better. And I said, exactly. Sherry said the same thing, exactly. But, uh, yeah, from that point forward, it's just kind of kind of moving uphill. Well, you're almost, this place is almost to the top. I don't know how you could have done any better. Kevin, enjoy it. And uh, good luck with all the fishing stories. Appreciate it. Thank you.